Awesome. Wait, hopefully this changes. Perfect. So, how's everyone doing? Today is a little bit of a um, rush, rush for me, but I said absolutely not. We are not canceling the live. And so I'm not going to show you my face because I literally just finished. Um, I didn't have a chance to really prepare my appearances. And uh, it's Father's Day. Richard's away. I just finished marinating some chicken. Uh, we're going to be doing a barbecue with the neighbors later. So I got to be on point, but I also do not want to miss our time together. So really quickly, let's talk about what this piece is right here. This is a canvas painting, um, and this was done for my live event at the Palatine Rose Farms yesterday, and we did roses, and this was just the inspirational piece. So people learn how to paint the roses, and then after they sort of have an idea of what they could do. Um, so this is one of the things uh, I wanted to show you guys because I was so pleased with how this turned out and um, we might just do something like this today because today we are, today I am doing, I'm sort of introducing you guys to the Paul Rubens set of Gukai, I think it's called Gukai paints which is right here, let me move this away. And they are, I've swatched them already on Instagram, and some of you guys have caught that, some of you haven't. Um, but this is what they essentially look like. It's upside down. They've got a really beautiful variety of different colors happening here, and so I'm excited to sort of do that with you guys, paint with these uh, today while you guys are live with me. So it's not the best show of what the colors look like but again if you want to see the swatch video I have it on my Instagram uh, it is there it was alive so you can check that out today we're I'm going to be using these and we're going to go ahead and paint something floral kind of like what I just showed you um, one thing I really like about this set uh, especially if you're starting out and you're not quite sure what to get they include a sorry this is not it this is right here they include a uh, metallic paint in there, which I think is quite nice. And in fact, hold that thought. I am going to show you guys the sheet that I did for the IG Live, the Instagram Live. And that's right here. Hi, Leia. So this was the practice sheet that I did. This was literally my swatch sheet. I swatched out all the colors, some really beautiful bright colors, kind of looks like gouache a little bit. And this right here is the uh, is the metallic. Very, very decent stuff. Um, very opaque and potent if you like rich dark colors. So keeping this in mind, we'll do something along, along the lines of, you know, the the sheet I had shown you. This was also another one I had done over the week using the leftover paints and I really liked how it turned out. So lots uh, of different options to paint today but uh, I'm going to go with the flow and we'll paint something pretty. All right so uh, let's let me just get myself organized here really quickly making sure that you guys can see everything on my screen. Doesn't look like Patty or Jill or any of the other regulars are here today, Leia. It's just you and I don't know, whoever else doesn't want to say hi, I guess. Uh, but that's okay. I'm sure people will catch the replay later on. Okay, so... I am using my Etcher sketchbook and this is the pot press, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I always get them mixed up sometimes, especially when I'm in a rush or got several things on my mind. I will be using a palette today because we've got these two paints and I do need to um, do some mixing. So I'll put that right here and I do notice that there's a little bit of a... Um, there we go. 
a little bit of a blur focus on focus sort of thing happening so hopefully that fixed it for my brushes because I want to try and do something nice and loose like the canvas I showed you I will use my quill to do some nice base layers and then we'll go ahead and use the silver black velvet to do some more detailing inside and then I'm just going to keep the mop handy in case I want to do some smaller looser florals and then obviously I really I'm going to keep this handy just in case I use it I need it the round miniature number one by Zen Art Supplies I've got water ready I've got like a paper towel handy on the side and uh, yeah I think this should be enough for us to begin so uh, I'm going to put this over here to the side really quickly before I begin I want to make sure oh Michelle hi Michelle oh Leah yes I, I decided to post on IG just to make sure just so people in case they end up catching it I know it was last minute sorry guys for those watching the replay okay so um, I don't expect everyone to have these colors today obviously but um, I'm going to be using, they don't have names unfortunately, or at least I cannot read them because it's in Chinese, but um, I'm going to use this, what looks like the, like a golden, and I will use this red, it's like an orangey red, I believe, actually no, instead of the orangey red, I'm going to use like the pink red. So it's got more of a pink in it than the orange. I will keep some yellow handy. And for my greens, I am going to use a combination of, I'll take a little bit of this brown and mix it in with some of this sort of teal-like green, like a light teal. And uh, let's Let's try some of the uh, metallics as well, just to kind of add some details and see how that pans out. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Do I want to use anything else? Let's just take a purple as well. And keep that handy, because if I want to mix it with the red, I might get some nice results. So that's where my head's at right there. And then just to sort of have a nice cool color amidst all our... Um, warm colors. I know the purple is slightly cool. Let's get a blue. So I'm going to get this like cobalt sort of blue and that's it. So these are the ones I'm going to be using. Feel free to take colors that you have that are similar or just use whatever you want. Go with the flow guys. Do your thing. Okay so my main dominant floral is going to be the these two colors which is the pinky red and the orange. And so I'm going to go ahead and mix some of the colors right here. And to mix it, first of all, let's lay some color down. I'm actually going to have one more palette handy just in case I need to, like, get more. I think for this big floral, because this brush is so huge, this is not going to work out for me. I'll keep this for the smaller bits and use this one for the bigger areas and the big brush. So, let's mix some right in this area because I know it's pretty much the same red that I had used the last time. Now, these colors are very, very potent, so a little does go a long way, um, more so than usual. I'm going to get some of this orange and mix it in this area right here. Oh, I've got to do that massaging technique that Patty was telling me because... Clearly, there's a lot of liquid in this one. Hi, Andy. Good morning. Um, okay, here we go. Just add some of that. Perfect. And if I need more, I can always come get more. I'll just add some purple in this area as well. Oh my gosh, this is tough to open up. There we go. I'll to use my teeth a little bit. I'll just put some 
right near the blue area, just a tad. Very watery. Should have probably massaged this one as well. That's okay. And because I've got purple there and we are using a little bit of blue, let's just use the blue as well. So since it looks like I'm putting all my colors on here, I don't know if I'll be using that palette, but uh, let's just roll with it for now and see what happens. Some of the purple is leaking a bit. Okay, so we've got those. Uh, yeah, might as well lay down the green as well. There's some green. And I'll put some of that brown. Just a tad. Okay. And then we'll keep the metallic for the last. Oh, need some yellow. Because I think if we mix some of this yellow with that pink, we might get a nice pretty coral. So, or we could just add some yellowy flowers. Excited for that. Okay, here we go. We are good to begin. We're ready? So, making sure my brush is done, I'm going to go ahead and mix some of this orangey color right here. So, I was told that these are watercolor, but they've got uh, characteristics of both gouache and watercolor. Like if you use, like they, they seem very much so like gouache, but when you, if you go less on the color and more on water, they give you a beautiful watercolor effect as well. So I'm not quite sure. And on the, on the actual box itself, it doesn't quite say anything outside of uh, Chinese, Chinese painting pigments, I think. Hold on. Ch yeah, Chinese painting pigments. So um yeah not sure we'll go with watercolor for now because we specialize we do watercolor together okay so i've got this color mixed and ready i'm going to go ahead and add some loose strokes to kind of do my base uh painting and we're going to do like let's start off with a rose and i'll do that off just a little bit at the top here so lightly doing our little C strokes. And then dipping the tip of my brush in water. Go ahead and add more strokes. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of unmixed pigment in there. So it's giving me a darker hue. And as I'm going outward, I'm just doing lighter strokes all around. And I'm also making sure it's nice and damp because what I want to do next is take my number eight. I'm going to get some of that nice, beautiful pink, red, whatever you want to call it. And this time I want the consistency to be more... Um, more color less water and then just do this inner strokes in the center and get a nice beautiful blend happening so you can see the run and how it kind of now displays characteristics of watercolor which i find quite fascinating for something that's almost like dual purpose I'm just going to go in and fluff up some of these areas that seem to be very hard edged because I want them to blend in nicely. And so very lightly using the tip of my brush, I'm just kind of doing the same strokes that we initially started with. Maybe even take a little bit of that red, add some of it onto the sides or the edges of your rose. Okay, make sure there's white space because white space is your friend and all that good stuff. And now right away what I'm going to do is I'll take some of the same 
using the same brush, I'm going to take some of the uh, lemon or the yellow. And I'm going to do one similar to this rose here, but in the lemon. And we'll start here. And this time I'm going to really make sure I've got a lot of water on my brush to kind of really tone down the intensity. As you can see, like a little goes a long way. These are very bright colors. Um, yeah. So I don't want to get... Like we've got a nice dark rose here. I would like for this one to be a lot lighter and fluffier. Okay, so I've got some nice lemon stuff happening here. And actually while this is happening, I'm going to mix a little bit of the white right here with the reddish hue that I have. And let's get a lighter color while this lemon is sort of kind of drying up. And I want to do a lighter looking floral here. And I'm touching that rose deliberately because I want to get that nice blend if I can. And this is just going to be like a five petal flower. And just doing loose strokes to kind of keep it nice and loose. I'm pushing all the color down to the center so I get a nice dark center. Okay. All right. So now we're going back in with the number eight and I know I've got some of that lemon, sorry, the red, uh, I'm going to get some of that red mixed in with the, with the, with the peach and going back in here, <clears throat> I want to add some detail to my rose. Now, as I'm doing a few more strokes around the edges, I'm just adding, I'm taking off some of the color by just washing it down in my little bowl of water. And then we're going to go ahead and add some of this darker orangey hue just in the center of this flower here. And what I'm doing is just using the tip of my brush to add some fine lines down the center. Adding some oomph to my flower in the center. Okay. All right, so now that we've got this, we've got some bright florals at the top here. It might be nice to kind of even add some um, I just want to add a little bit of this red happening in here and just giving it slight definition because this is still lightly damp. So if we go in with this additional color, we're going to get a nice beautiful blend as you can see, like a gradient sort of effect. just lightly adding that in. Uh, I'm also going to intensify this guy right here. I'm just ever so lightly using the tip of my brush to kind of create these thin lines. And then around the rose, this area of the rose at least. Um, mixing a little bit of that orangey you. I'll just do a little bit here. Nothing crazy and leave that as is. And then 
So we've got this. Let's do a little bit of blue. Okay, so using my number eight, I'm going to get some of the blue hue right here. I think this is like a cobalt or something, if I'm not mistaken. And let's add a little bit of like fluff florals around. And I want the consistency of this mixture to be like 80-20. Uh, but again, these colors are really vibrant, guys. So let's just see what happens. I'll add some blue flowers over here at the top. So let's do our regular five petal flowers on a smaller scale. So pressing down, using the side of my brush to kind of get a nice width. I'm just adding these little one, two, three, four, five petal florals and pushing all the color down to the center. Now dipping the tip of my brush in water because what I want to do is get a nice transition of dark to light. Uh, maybe even get a little bit of that purple mixed in with the blue. And just add some dots to the center. I'm just going to add an additional few strokes around this flower. dabbing my brush on my paper towel so that there's not too much happening. I'm also touching the main flower that I painted to kind of get a nice blend so there's there's a nice blend of all the colors mishmashing together sort of. And then I'm going to do my light little fluffing which you guys know I love to do. And that's literally just doing little dabs of paint with the edges of the flowers. The ones that are closest to the roses, I'm just going to add a little more color on my brush and just have it, have it be a tad darker starting from there so that this way you get that nice, yeah, there's a lot of shadow happening by the rose. And then as you go outward, it gets lighter. Getting some more of that blue, just going to add some of the fluffing that I was telling you about. We want these to sort of dry up as little dabs of blue. I'm just kind of trying to phase them out so leave it that way and then let's do a couple of that happening down here on this side actually let's just do it beside this flower here so same idea try and get a mishmash of your your blue some of that purple starting the darkest the one closest to the main flower and then kind of heading out into a lighter tone. Get a nice blend. Get a little bit more blue happening here. And then the fluffing that I was telling you about. Those of you who take the monthly classes and who do my YouTube videos, you know exactly what I mean by fluffing. It is adding those little dots, kind of phasing out. By now, it's probably a word in your vocabulary. All right, there we go. I think that's enough. Um, let's get some of that green happening so we can do a little bit of greenery and then decide if we want to have any more flowers because I think it would be nice to have some lighter florals just kind of peeking from around but let's see what happens once we add some green first. So I'm mixing some of my brown with the green and I want to get two different consistencies, one super watery, one slightly darker. So this is the watery version of it. And let's just quickly connect some of these guys here first. 
very loosely. Again, I'm, my hand is hovering over the sheet and I'm just lightly grazing the tip of my brush to kind of add these lines in here. Same thing here. Stems attaching. All right, and now we can add add some leaves. So I want these leaves to be a lot lighter, and so I'm just going to dip the tip of my brush in water so that when I add these leaves in, it's going to be a lot lighter. Add some leaves happening, even touching some of the blue so that the blue seeps into the green and you get that pretty romantic blend. And I want these leaves to be a lot smaller because we'll do the main dominant leaves and uh, they will be a lot bigger and darker. Adding some to the bottom. Oh, got it. Uh, batteries, guys. Thank you. I looked up and the thing I caught it now. Should be able to see me now. There we go. Transition. Okay. I think you can see me now. So continuing on, I've got some of that fluffing green happening here. I'm going to get more of the darker green and let's start adding some leaves to our roses and such. Uh, I will mix a little bit of my yellow into my green and this way we've got a slightly different hue happening and let's just do a couple of leaves like right here. So I'm going to do a stem then dipping the tip of my brush in water. I'm just going to go ahead and add one leaf right here and another one here. I'm going to get some of that darker green and just kind of add a couple of strokes into the stem here and maybe even add a leaf or two beside these, these guys. I'm adding another one here. getting some of that yellow in there to kind of give it a nice variation of the greens that we have. This is more of a brownie green. Um, I've listed the paints. These are the new Gukai, Gukai paint. I think that's how you pronounce it by Paul Rubens. It's listed in the description below, guys, so if you want to check it out. Uh, you can definitely go check it out there. It is quite the it's quite the set, if you ask me, um, because like I was mentioning in the beginning, it's like a combination of gouache and and uh, and watercolor together. So it really depends on how much you want to mix and how much what like what sort of effect you're going for. So I love it. So again, I'm just trying to like add details very loosely without kind of doing something too intense and adding water. And even as I'm adding water, it's still really intense. I need to add more water, it seems. 
Um, I'm going to get a little bit more of the green mixed in with the yellow to get more of a greeny look here. Let's get some leaves at the top. This is more of a brighter green as you can see. Or maybe even add some of that brighter green in here so that we can get some harmony happening. And they all tie in. I'm going to add a couple of strokes of the green in between these florals here so that you get, again, more tying in and stuff. Some at the top here. Yeah, it is a fun paint. I did do a swatching of this whole set on my IG. So if you guys want to do, if you want to check it out, um, yeah, that's an IG live that I did. So check it out. Feel free to check it out. I'm going to try and get these leaves over here at the top to be a lot lighter. Let's see if I can do that. So I, I added more water, so let's see how this sort of transitions. I'm going to take off more, more color from my brush here and just kind of add a watered down version of some strokes. Let's just see, guys. So adding a little bit more here. <clears throat> Trying to get that nice feathered out sort of look. Okay, really taking off a lot of water and color. I'm just going to try and get some framing at the top. And let's see. Okay, so we've got some happening there, some here. Let's do some of that lighter green strokes here. But I'm, quite, I'm washing it down or wiping it down so that it's not prominent. I literally want these to be like green watery stains overlapping the paint so that it's indicative of background lighter leaves. Um, let's do some just off to the side here and Perhaps just a little bit over here on this end. And I'm just going to add some strokes of darker green within these leaves here, some of them. There's so much you can do in terms of um, styling and whatnot when it comes to leaves, foliage, um, in this loose style of painting with watercolor especially, like it's just quite an amazing medium to work with. And I think the most relaxing part about it all is the fact that it blends in so, so, I mean it's so therapeutic to watch the color blend in and bloom and the colors kind of mixing and it's even more relaxing when you you when you're the one actually doing it as opposed to just watching it on screen so if you guys like watching me I and you've never tried watercolor you should definitely definitely try it uh, it's something that I feel like everyone should experience and it's okay if you don't like it and you don't end up picking it up that's totally fine but it is so relaxing to do it's not everyone's vibe, and I get it, but it's definitely worth a shot. And I think over the last two years, quite a few people have ended up trying it and really liking it, and yeah. Now, some of us can't even stop uh, 
buying watercolor and brushes and whatnot. So it's quite interesting. So I'm just adding, as I mentioned, still adding different hues of green into my leaves that I have just painted on. And I want to add some here, but I also feel like I want to add some flowers. So what I'll do is, remember I was talking about mixing some of the purple with the red. So I think that's what I will do. Let's just see what we get. If we get anything nice. And then I'll mix it in with the white to get maybe a mauve color. Let's see if that is possible. And then we can do some, some little tweaks of mauve goodness. And I'll mix that on this palette. Yeah, it's working. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit of strokes here at the top to indicate that there's some flowers happening there. And then we'll do some here. Okay, so for here, let's just do exactly like how we did these filler guys, but on a slightly medium scale. some strokes to kind of indicate that there are some flowers underneath and around. Add more here. And then dipping the tip of my brush in water, brushing off most of the color. Wow, this, this color is so potent, guys. Like I have to, it's almost a shame how much color I have to wash off because I want a good contrast of light and darks in my flowers. So that I can get that nice faded dark to light look, which is what I'm sort of aiming for. I'm going to have to use the rest of this color on another painting for sure. So I'm just adding a couple of dots to kind of indicate buds for these flowers and just like smaller flowers. Again, leaving a lot of white space. I'm going to get a little bit of this darker purple and I'm adding it to the centers of this of the flowers, give it some pop, maybe even add some to the edges of some of the petals, yeah, and then I did some here at the top, so I'm just going to try and Give it some lighter shades of this hue. So again, it looks like it's phasing out. And then since I've done two there, I'm just going to do a tad amount of that just at the bottom here, but it needs to be very faded. So making sure I got lots of water. I'm just going to add a couple of dabs. Taking off more color, I'm just adding this at the bottom, and then I'm going to do a splatter with this color because it's really nice and pretty. So let's just do a quick splatter, then we'll do the greens and we're wrapping up. So splatter here. Oh, too much water. So let me just dab some of this off because it's bleeding into the green. 
I could have left it, it's not a big deal. Now I'll take my miniature brush and get some of that green. Let's add some centers to these flowers. Um, actually, before the centers, let's just add some stems and such leaves and whatnot. So smaller scale, this way you're creating more of a Uh, contrast in size and then just dipping my brush in water to kind of get a lighter hue of green as I'm going ahead and creating more of these stems and then as I'm creating sorry as, as I'm painting some of these leaves I'm touching some of the pink or the mauve and what's happening is it's streaming into the green which is a nice effect as well that nice gorgeous romantic effect that we all love and i'm just going to add a couple of blobs you can do a splatter here as well with the green if you wish but i'm just adding some blobs I'm going to add some of that over here at the bottom. Nothing crazy because this one's very phased out and light in color, so I don't want to add too much of it. Thank you, Sue. Um, Sue, it's on my it's on my Instagram feed. If you go on to my Instagram feed, it should be there under videos, I believe, because it was a live I did on Instagram where I just watched all the colors while everyone was there. Um, and now I'm just doing a painting on YouTube to sort of really see what we can do with these. So I'm just going to add more of that at the top here. And I think that's it. Um, maybe, oh, we didn't do the centers of these guys. So um, maybe a yellow. And that would really make things pop nicely amidst that nice purple that we have, leaving white space still. And I'll I'll have to like zoom in so you guys can see how the yellow instinctively makes everything pop. Um, and I'm just adding a couple of dabs here and there in the outer areas because they they're not quite defined as well as these guys here. Oh, and we got to do the center for this one too. So again, I think, I think for that, let's do the dark purple or the brown. This is the brown. Mix it with some of the dark purple. Why not? Because that purple with the, with this color would be nice. So just quick little lines of this color and then some dots right below and I think that's good enough just adding some more strokes with just like water on my brush to kind of give it a two-tone looser feel um, okay, so I'm going to stand up to survey, to survey everything. It looks fairly good. I, I'm sort of itching to add something here, but I will not. I'll refrain from doing that. I think this is good enough. 
let's do a zoom in so you can see. Oh, actually, what am I saying? I need to do some quick to show you guys the. Um, yeah, what am I even saying? To show you guys the metallics. So I got some of the metallics on here and mixing it up. And I think for this, it would be nice to just do a couple of berry sort of elements. So let's just do that. Thank you, Leah. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, so I think because I was itching to sort of do something here, maybe let's just go with it and add, add a bit of stuff here. I'm trying to get it to be as thin as possible. And again, uh, because it's so, it's yellow, it's, metallics are always hard to sort of capture on video. I'm going to have to do a zoom in and let's just see if, at the end, once I'm done, and then let's just see if you can actually see it as well. But this is like a light yellow gold, which is nice. In fact, we could have used that for the centers of the flowers too, which would have been nice. Add some here. Thank you, Kathy. Um, they are celebrating their anniversary right now, so um, they ended up sending me this set, and I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. So I figured since it's the anniversary and whatnot, it makes sense to do something um, with, the, with these sets for the live. <clears throat> so I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. It is... I, I find it very inspirational to me when the colors, when I'm really liking the colors, I am immediately inspired to create things. And I've not planned any of this. I just kind of went with the flow. And again, inspirational because of the colors mainly. Um, and I see how the color hits and flows and all that good stuff immediately. I'm like, oh, I think I know exactly what I want to do with this. Sue, you're funny. Um, you'll actually be surprised where you can find some older adults. <laughs> but I mean, Instagram, there's a ton on Instagram. I think over the last two years, people have really, Instagram is now universal for every age group. It's TikTok. It's TikTok that is more, it's TikTok and Snapchat, I think, that's more for the younger folk. And I'm no longer in that category, apparently. So, yeah. All right, so that's that. So let's do a zoom in so I can show you guys what it looks like. Okay. So here we go. Actually, let's zoom. That's better. Stop the camera from shaking. And here you go. So you can see, fortunately, again, I'm not quite sure if you can see the glisten, but it's a very faint glisten, um, but just a great introductory metallic for someone who doesn't have a lot of metallics. And then the colors, as you can see, you guys saw me mixing the colors. You saw me 
kind of getting water. These are extremely potent. Um, a little goes a super, super long way and beautiful, like it dries up into some really beautiful gradients and very bright. So I'm quite pleased with this. You guys might see me using this um, for a few lives and other sessions. So stay tuned. Anyways, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Let me know in the comments what you thought. If you do end up doing this, tag me on Instagram or Facebook or email me if you're not on any of those. And uh, appreciate your time. I know it is Father's Day, so off you go now. Go celebrate. And that's it, guys. Um, oh, yeah. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button. Really, really does help my channel grow. And that's it. Thanks, guys, for watching, and we'll chat soon. Bye.